Hi guys, it's Blackie. And this is a further discussion about the William Collins survival knife, the WCSK. Okay, I did a quick overview before, and now I'm going to show you how some of these edges work. And as I said, this knife took a lot of R&D time and a lot of development. And when you first look at it, it doesn't, you know, immediately spring to mind as a design you recognize. And that's kind of the point. It was designed to be a woodsman's tool, to be a survival tool, to be a one tool option type deal. And it was designed to be a knife that could stand in a lot of different topics and a lot of different uh, tasks very well. So, let me show you how the various edges on this knife come into play. Now, I'm going to adjust the camera where you're looking over my shoulder so I can show you. I'm going to use something simple to carve on. I, of course, you could do this with wood or anything. But I'm going to carve on something so that it's quick for me to do it and show you how each action is. So, stay with me. Let me get the camera set up. Okay. So now, we've talked about the edges and the points. But let's actually show a little bit of use here. This straight edge right here. That's when we're doing this type of cut, where it's a straight pull to you precision type cut, where you can bear down and very cleanly do whatever it is you're wanting to do. In this case, I'm trying to you know cut something soft, but you can do very controlled, very thin detail work with it like that. This sweet spot right here is when you're going to hook and drag back type deal this allows you to slice through wood or whatever it is in a very controlled environment this is also in the chopping area where you're going to hit that and we'll get to that in a minute this point and this point we'll cover in a minute but this straight edge right here is best for the push away at least to me for this pushing away from you cut like this and allows you to very cleanly as you bear down on it it cut away from you so you see I'm going to come in here sharp at the top and I'm going to slice away from me like that that's what this edge does really good it's also a good when you're doing like this and you're draw cutting back to you I can sit there and like it was a, especially if I choke up on the knife, it's like a straight edge then. I can make it work like a small knife and straight edge slice back to me, just like that. And you see how thin I'm slicing there. You get a lot of, of precision. That was one of the things that we talked about in it, and that it needs to serve not just as a woods tool, it needs to be able to serve as a, as a cooking knife. I gotta be able to use this. This broad blade is good for acting like a spatula or stirring a pot. It's also good for picking up hunks of meat out of a pan or something like that and bringing it on and off of the fire. It's also, as you can see, I can cut that. That's probably an eighth of an inch or less, probably a lot less inch thick right there. It slices easily. This front edge up here is used when you're going to use your thumb and do this kind of push cut with your thumb. You know, I'm going to slice in and away. I'm going to lever and use my wrist to cut. You do this a lot in wood carving when you're trying to get wood off and, and cut in through something. You're going to use this thumb cut where you're bearing down and torquing away with your wrist and using your thumb as an anchor to slice and this does really good in wood anything else for that matter to slice it of course the point and the point does very precision work you choke up on it like this and this allows me to have very precision cut work right here at the edge that way I can very finely feather. I can very finely do detail. It's also small enough I can turn it around and use it like this for pushing straight into the wood 
and you're making that outline type deal to remove and make it split in a given angle at exactly. I can also fillet with this. Now, the point that we talked of. This point right here, the big point, where this really shines is choking up on the knife like this. I can take that point, as you see, and use it as a hollowing out type thing to push in and cut out hollowing. That way when I go in, cut, go in, cut, go in, cut, and I can make bowls, I can make, you know, hollowing things where I'm needing to make a socket for something. I'm needing to make a, a, uh, a spoon, I'm needing to whatever. And I can use it a, a lot like a gouge to cut in and make what you couldn't do with a straight edge, you can do with this hollowing edge, that gouge type ability from it. Especially if you pull back to you when you're doing it. You just simply cut in and do a gouge type deal. So you can make a hollow. This you're gonna find a lot to be used in trap sets. Um, making a, a pack frame, making two pieces of wood locked together, cutting dovetails, things like that. That's where this point right here is going to be your big one. Now this upper point does the same job, but it does it in a much smaller for this type thing. Where you dig in and you twist and cut out circular cuts into something like that where you're going to dig in and twist. That's where that point up there really shines with it. Being the design that it is, I can take it and harpoon that point into a stump or something. And taking wood, I can precision cut. Especially like if I'm going to try to make feather sticks or something where I don't want to do it freehanded for whatever reason. I can feather stick with this fairly easy to make very thin cuts in something. I can also, let's see if I can do this. I want to fillet this just like this. Just like I'd do a fish. I'd be following a backbone. But that straight edge at that angle lets me easily follow the backbone or whatever and get in here so I can fillet something. Now that action is what I'm gonna use whenever I'm cutting meat, when I'm cutting the fillet off of the backbone, or when I'm trying to make jerky out of a big animal. That's what that edges are good for.